Welcome back everyone, Tiffany Quinn here and this is our 8 count, 4 count total body tempo training. In today's routine, I'll be helping you build total body definition using a series of tempo specific dumbbell exercises that will help you build control over the lengthening and shortening muscle contractions that happen during exercise. Now of course, doing this will increase your time under tension, the burn you feel throughout, and help you build a more solid and sturdy mind to body connection. The only equipment you'll be needing for today's routine is your upper and lower body dumbbells. Now, of course, if all you have to work with is two filled water bottles as substitute or one pair of weights, this will be fine as well. Now smash that thumbs up button for me, subscribe to the channel for a new routine every week, and don't forget to grab your free December fitness guide from the links below. All right, everyone, I've certainly talked enough, so let's go ahead and get started. What's up everyone? Welcome to our full body tempo training. Now of course this implies that we'll be controlling the tempo or the cadence of our exercises today. So I've split our format up into two main circuits and a total of 12 exercises. This is six for the upper body and six exercises for lower body. Now we will be repeating those two times through at two separate tempos. So our first circuit will be a little bit higher intensity, holding our muscles time under tension at an eight count pace for our exercises. As we hit that second circuit, we'll be repeating those same exercises using a four count tempo, a bit more endurance at a faster pace. So we're starting off with the shoulders into a lat and a front raise. Again, we're gonna follow that cadence. So the palms are coming in with those weights, shoulders back and down, we're coming up for a count of four, lowering for a count of four, to the front for a count of four, and lower for a count of four. Use weights that are appropriate to you, even if that means three pound weights, and I'll be starting our timer in three, in two, in one. Grab a hold of those weights, the shoulders are coming back and down, facing straight ahead, slight bend in the elbows, it's up, two, three, four, lower, two, three, four, to the front, and down, two, three, four, very slow, very controlled, lower, two, three, four, and forward, and lower, you've got 20 seconds, you can do it, three, four, and down, two, three, four, keep those shoulders away from the ears, and down, two, three, four, last time to the side, and down, last time to the front, burn it out. Slowly lower it down, and if you'd like, you can put those weights down for that rest. So from here, we've got Arnold's press. The palms are facing in at the shoulders, up for a count of four, lower for a count of four, total of eight. Going in eight seconds, not ironic. All right, everyone, use those weights that are appropriate for you, even if that means lightening the load because of the time under tension. Out. Two, three, four, lower, two, three, four, soft bend in the knees. Facing straight ahead, keeping a slight bend in the elbows at the top. Two, three to the top, and one, two, three to the shoulders. Keep it nice and controlled. Lowering just a fraction of an inch at a time, all the way up all the way lower. Try to focus on those shoulder muscles doing the work. Lower, two, three, four, two more for me. And down. Last time, burn it out. And slowly lower, and you can bring those weights down to thigh level. Now from here, the palms are gonna start facing in. This is a rotational curl, working into the biceps. The elbows are nice and tight towards the waist. We come up, two, three to palms up, lower, two, three to palms in. In two, in one. Back is straight, core is tight, up, two, three, and pause, lower, two, three, and pause. Essentially taking it from a hammer curl into a biceps curl. A nice squeeze on the biceps at the top and slow to come down. One, two, three, four, lower, two, three, four. Now, of course, I could go with slightly heavier weights here. To keep things simple, I'm sticking with my eight and my 20 pound weights today. 
But if you feel like you can go a little bit heavier and you have them available right now, absolutely go for it. One, two, three, and squeeze. Lower, two, three, last time. Finish off that rep and relax those arms. All right, so for this next one, I am going to use my 20 pound. We're going into wide stance rows. So the feet come nice and wide, weight is coming to center, slight bend in the knees, and hinge forward. Now bring yourself down into that squat position. Right arm rests on the quad, left arm grabs the weight, squeeze up, two, three, and pause. Lower, two, three, to the floor. And up and lower. Now at the base of that movement, you want to try to allow a bit of a stretch to happen at the shoulder without dipping your upper body to the side. Lower, two, three, four, up, two, three, four. 20 seconds, working that same side the entire way through, and then we switch. And squeeze, and stretch and squeeze, and stretch. Get one more rep in there for me. All the way lower, and gently place that dumbbell on the mat. Whew. All right, we've got two more exercises here. That other side, then we work some of the triceps, and then we're down on the mat for our first lower body exercise. Going in six seconds. Slight bend in the knees, hinge forward, booty comes behind you. Squat down, relax that elbow on the opposite side. Up, two, three, and squeeze. Lower, two, three, and stretch. And up. And lower, facing down towards your mat the entire time. Try and hinge forward as best you can. Weight is in those heels, core is nice and tight. And head is in line with the neck, in line with the back, in line with the booty. How we feeling? Not too horrible, right? We have a chance to breathe, but that tension is there. Hold on to it. Up, two, three, and squeeze. Lower, two, three, and stretch. Last time up. One more lower. And relax that weight down. Okay, so you have two options here. You could use your heavier weight at center overhead, or you can hold both of those weights together if you have a smaller set. I am gonna show you with both the smaller ones. And we're taking those weights vertically overhead, elbows are tight and forward. It's up, two, three, four, lower, two, three, four, shoulders away from the ears. Trying to bring those weights a little bit below the hairline. As you come up, you're squeezing the triceps trying to raise and lower through the triceps. Underneath the arms, right here, elbows are forward as best you can. They're going to want to flare outwards. You want to try to prevent that from happening. So rather than here, you want them forward facing me. Two, three to the top. One, two, three to lower. Now as we hit our rest point, I want you to pre prepare to get down on the mat. We're gonna start with a hip mobility exercise today. Last time down. One more raise, bring it down to shoulder and lower those weights. All right, you can shimmy your weights over to the side for a moment. Now you can relax your head down on the mat or have it lifted. Both legs straight, the bottom arm comes in front, the top arm forms a fist, and we're going to create tension here Core tight, hips are forward, lift the top leg up. Now draw your knee as far forward as you can without rounding the lower back. It's out to the side and slowly lower. External rotation to the top, internal rotation down. I got a nice pop on that one. Up, two, three, four, lower, two, three, four, open, two, three, four, lower, two, three, four. Trying to extend that range each time you come up. No rounding the lower back, nothing is moving except for your leg through that hip joint. One more time up, one more time lower, try to bring it further forward, extend 
and dramatically switch sides. All right, just opening things up before we go into our glute bridges and the rest of our lower body exercises. So bottom arm comes forward, both feet are flexed. Plant that fist down in the bottom hand, lift the top leg, bring that knee as far forward as you can. Open, two, three, four, lower, two, three, four. Breath in through the nose, breath out through the mouth, slow and controlled. Two, three to the top, one, two, three to the floor. Not hitting the floor though. We're staying at that same hip level. Trying to bring that knee a little bit farther forward. 15 more seconds. Then we're going to grab a hold of our heavier weight, or whichever you might be using, and going into our bridge position. One more open. One more close. Try to bring it further forward. Hold that tension. Extend and come onto your back for me. Grabbing a hold of your heavier weight. Four count up, four count down into our bridge. The entire time you have a goal through this one. So feet are flat, in neutral, weight on the pelvic bones. I want you to tuck your hip bones forward, curling them towards the chin. We're gonna hold that throughout as we come up. Two, three, four, lower vertebrae by vertebrae. Keeping that hip tucked forward the entire way through. And lower and up and lower both hips are facing towards the ceiling in alignment squeeze those glutes at the top try to focus on coming down from the top of your spine the thoracic spine all the way to the lumbar keeping that tilt and up two three four lower two three four breathing throughout one more time up, one more lower, and come up to standing for me. All right, straight into our sumo squats. The feet are wide, wider than hip width distance, and a 45 degree angle out, that weight can come to center. Once again, four count down, four count up. Take your time. In two, in one. Shoulders away from the ears, down, two, three, four, lift, two, three, four. Knees are out to either side, in line with your second and third toe. How are you feeling? I think you're doing absolutely incredible. Just keep on going. We've got two more exercises, then it's into our faster pace. So can you believe we're already about halfway through the workout? Two, three to the floor, up, two, three to the top. Squeezing the glutes, Staying upright in that stance, in your stature. Woo. And raise. One more time down. One more raise up. And that weight can come down to center, gently to the mat. Now from here, plie squats, working more of the thighs. So I didn't include lunges today. You're welcome. So feet are coming out to the side, nice and wide. We're trying to bring the thighs parallel with the mat in a 90 degree angle as best you can. Weight can come right here, held low or at chest center. Up, two, three, four, lower, two, three, four. Soft bend in the knees at the top. Down, two, three, and four. Two, three, and four. One, two, three to come up. Booty comes down below the chest, straight line. Like you have a string coming down from the ceiling and you're following it up and down. Up, two, three, four. Pull up through the inner thighs. And raise. One more lower. One more time up. Incredible job. I'd like you to grab a hold of that second weight going into our narrow deadlifts. One, two, three to hinge. One, two, three to raise. Going in eight seconds. Weight stay close to the body like you're painting down the thigh. In two, in one. Lower, two, 
three and four. Two, three and four. Now if you can only cover a shorter range here, that's all right. You can shorten that tempo. Of course, make this work out your own. Pressing the weight through the heels, trying to lift the toes up. Core is tight, back is straight. Following that eye gaze forward. And raise. Think about that extension of the hamstring as you come down. The shortening of the hamstring as you come up through them. One, two, three, four. Lift, two, three, four. Finish off that rep and we are right from the top. This time, four count pace. With some slight variations. Yay. <laughs> All right, so in 10 seconds, we're going back to our side and front raise at a four count pace. So palms are facing in, don't let them touch the thighs. It's one, two, three, four to the front, two, three, four to the side, to the front. Incredible, one, two, three, four. Count with me, three, four, and up, and up. Breathing the entire way through. Keep the back straight and tall. Strong and powerful. One, two, three, four. Three, four, 15 seconds. Give me everything you've got for these last 15 minutes. Two more. Last one to the sides and down. So as we work towards the front, we're hitting a bit more of the anterior shoulder. So the anterior delt, as we come to the side, so the center head, the medial, into our Arnold presses. This time alternating to keep the pace a bit higher, working into endurance fibers. One, two, one, two, let's go. Weights up, press lower, press lower. Palm out in, palm out in. One, two, three, and four. Elbow coming back down towards that waist. Still a micro bend in the knees. Soft bend, I should say. Pacing ahead. Oh man, so it's getting cooler in here. I am loving it right now. <laughs> While I could do without the cold weather outside, when it does hit those summer months, the studio gets pretty brutal. It's actually quite nice in here today. One, two, one, two. Endurance. So we went from strength and higher tension, now that faster pace. Last four, three, two, and one. Okay, bringing those weights to the side now for our rotational palm, palm in, palm up curl. This time, faster tempo. One, two, three, four. No pause at the top, I want those arms in movement. Elbows are tucked towards the waist, in two, in one, stand tall, shoulders away from those ears. One, two, one, two. Not allowing the weights to swing behind you. I want full control over those. If you need to lighten the load, absolutely feel free to. There's an appropriate weight for every exercise and every tempo. Sometimes you have to play around to find the right weight for you. And that can mean a lighter weight or a heavier weight. Depends on that rep count, the tempo you're trying to go at, and the control you want to have. One, two, one, two. Quality, always. Your form over the weight you're using, no matter what. You can build it up as you move along. Last one, last lower, and this time we switch that row up a bit. So rather than sticking with the row throughout, we're coming into that wide stance hinge. It's a row to a fly. Careful not to hit your knee here. So I want that slight bend in the knees. Hinge forward, small squat. Take that arm over the quad. Grab a hold of that lighter weight. One, two, three, four to the side, two, lower. Two, it's quick, quick. One, two, three, four. Get that four count in. Only the shoulder level on that fly. 
Get as many as you can here. Still keeping form, keeping the back straight. Slight bend in the elbow. As you come up into that fly, leading with the elbow. One, two, three, four. Row, lower, side, down. Now hitting a bit of the rear delt as well. Last time to the side, last row, lower, one more on that other side, and then we have our triceps extension overhead. Yay, we are almost there, guys. All right, in 10 seconds, let's get ourselves into position. That palm starts facing in, starting off with that row, then into the fly. In two, in one. Row, lower, start slow, raise, lower, then try to speed it up. Three, four, one, two, three, four. Knees are behind the toes as well. Facing down, knowing that I've got your back, just follow my voice, I'll tell you when that timer goes off. Try not to look up, keep working, get through it. Actually, sometimes if you don't look at the timer long enough, it feels like it goes by quicker. Raise, lower, row, down. 15 seconds. Do not look up, keep working for me. I know these are tough, but you can do it. They do get easier over time. Last four, three, two, one. Lower that weight down and into our triceps extension. So this time we're going single weight. You can stick with that first variation if you'd like. Whatever works better for you. But we're gonna bring those weights over. Again, try to tuck those elbows forward. Lift, lower, lift, lower. It's one, two, three, four. Try to bring the elbows further forward. This is tough with both. Breathing, rib cage down. Core is tight. Shoulders away from the ears, no hunching. One, two, one, two. Just a few more to go here. Power through it because this is our last upper body exercise. Then we're on the final quarter of our workout. Lift, lower, lift, lower. Oh, there they are, lighten up for me. Another four, three, two, one, and bring them up overhead down towards the shoulder and lower. This time going back into our same position to the hips. Little bit different this time. So that bottom arm can come forward, flat. Top arm forms a fist in it. Raise that top leg, foot is bent. Drive that knee forward. Try to get as much of a flex here that you can. Lift that leg out to the side. Internal rotation, foot back. External rotation back to that 90. If you can, bring it a little bit further. Out behind you. Internal rotate. Core is tight. Hips are forward, trying not to compensate at the lower back. It's tricky. One, two. One, two. We're not racing through these. All that movement is coming from that hip joint. Rotating in and rotating away. Technically, internal rotation has become this way, external rotation here. And you can slowly lower that leg, staying in that 90, extend it down, stack the legs, and over to that other side. So I'm going to start incorporating more of the mobility training that I've been doing into our workouts. Bear with me <laughs> as I work on my cue points for this. Of course, everything takes practice. All right, so that hand comes forward, Ball that top hand into a fist, flex the feet, raise that top leg, bring it into that 90 forward, try to tuck it up as close as you can to the chest. And then we're gonna take it out to that 90 degree on the side, hips are still forward, and we internally rotate and externally rotate. One, two, one, two. You're moving through this area here. It is tricky. One, Two, one, two. Isolate that area. Then we're going into our hip thrusts rather than a glute bridge. 
Another three. And out. And two. And out. On one, hold that 90, hold that tension, and slowly lower that leg. And extend and stack the feet. You can always grab a pillow or a yoga block and rest your head down on it if that's more comfortable for you. Okay, into our hip thrust. Just a few more exercises to go. Feet are at neutral. This time, slight tuck forward, but it's quicker. Up, two, lower, two. One, two, three, four. Thrusting with those glutes towards the ceiling like it's a really fun Saturday night. Lift, two, lower, two. Date night moves. Hee <laughs> hee. All right, squeeze at the top, lower. Squeeze at the top, lower. I want you pushing that weight into your heels and driving the hips forward. Both are in alignment with the ceiling. We have another 15 seconds, and then it's straight up to standing. For our last three exercises. Insane, right? Another three, and two. Last one, all right, you got a little bit of extra credit on that one. So we're coming up to standing, sumo squat position. That way it can be held low or high, whatever you prefer, it can be vertical, it can be horizontal. Do what works best for you. I'm not here to dictate you, just to guide you. So the feet are at 45 degrees, coming down for two, and up for two. Breathing the entire way. Working a little bit more of that cardio aspect here. And raise. And raise. Knees are in line with the second and third toe, not coming over the toes. Super important. And raise. And raise. Come on, you know you want to get to the end of it. Even if you don't love squats. I did you a solid. We didn't have any lunges. Get through the sumos. Get through the plie stance and then finish off strong with those deadlifts. Another three. And two. Last one, and raise it up. We have officially two more exercises to go. So those feet, this time come out wide. We're trying to come square with the mat, and raise if you'd like. You can go without the weight if you're feeling fatigued. Otherwise, let's pick that baby up. <laughs> Going in four, three, two, and come on down and raise. And raise. So as I was saying before, I am taking a few mobility courses with someone that I think genuinely is obsessed with it. <laughs> and you know me, anytime I get into something, I wanna know everything, I wanna go all in or nothing. So I am learning. And I'm learning how to isolate, better isolate joints. It's much different from stretching. But we are going to be seeing more of it. And over time, I will improve my delivery on it. Lower and raise. Lower and raise. For four, three, two. Last one. Drop that weight off. And we are going into our narrow, narrow deadlift. This time to the knee to keep it quick. So we're only coming to right here and raise. Try not to strain your back here. We wanna pull up through the hamstrings. Going in two, in one. One, two, one, two. Keep it quick and controlled. Weight stay near the body. Last exercise, guys. And I'll tell you, really was not feeling it today. But the moment I got down here, the moment that play button started, I was in it. I was ready. One, two, one, two. Weight through the heels and up. Weight through the heels, pulling up through the hamstrings. Micro bend in the knees. Four more, three more, two more, last one, raise it up. And before we head out, a quick arm and a quick hip stretch. So I will show you actually with the yoga block. But first, 
Let's just stretch our arms out, quick mobility drill. So we're coming onto the arm. Top leg is gonna come forward. Try to straighten yourself out as best you can. The top palm faces away. We bring it up and over. Internally rotate through the shoulder and down and reverse. Slow and controlled. At your own pace here. Trying to fight for some extra internal rotation as you come overhead, bringing it towards the midline and away. Last one forward, internally rotate, all the way down, raise overhead, external rotation, and lower that arm. While we're still on this side, into the hips. So you can always use that yoga block to place your head on. The bottom arm is flat, the top arm forms a fist. From here, we're gonna inhale through the nose. As we exhale, we're pulling in full body tension. Now we're gonna lift that top leg up, we're bringing it all the way forward as far as you can without compensating or rocking the hips. All the way forward, lift up, internal rotation, and lower down. Come forward, stack the feet, kick back, bring it up, external rotation, all the way down. Slow raise, internally rotate, lower down, trying not to arch that back. Come forward, stack the feet, come back like your donkey kicking back without the bend, lift up, externally rotate, and down, and again, bring it up, internally rotate, all the way down, bring it forward, take it back as far as you can without arching, all the way back up, external rotation only through that hip, and slowly lower, controlled, and extend that leg away from you. All right, over to the other side, starting with that arm, and then into the leg. How does that feel? It's different, right? You can also do that bent leg. I do like the straight leg. Personally, I feel like it helps me isolate better, but it can be tough to keep the hips forward. All right, so onto that forearm, bottom leg straight, top leg forward. Hand is going to extend in front. Elongate that arm, breath in through the nose. As you exhale, pull in full body tension. Only thing moving is that arm all the way up. Internal rotation, all the way down. Keep that extension, fight for that internal rotation. External, and all the way to the front. All right, my adrenaline is starting to come down a bit. <laughs> Definitely take some time as we get out of those weighted exercises. Let's do one more full rotation and then we'll work that other hip. All the way up, internally rotate and down. Same thing, other direction and all the way down. All right, extend both of those legs for me. Head comes onto the yoga block. I've been doing these every day, by the way. So the top, the bottom arm, flat with the palm, make a fist, ball it into that bottom palm. Breath in through the nose. As you exhale, pull that full body tension. Back is straight, core is tight. Lift that top leg. Slowly bring it as far forward as you can. One side will probably be different from the other. You're lifting all the way out. Internally rotate. Take that leg down. Only moving through the hip joint. Stack the feet. Kick back a little further. No rounding of the lumbar spine. All the way up. Externally rotate and all the way down. Whoo! Feels good. <laughs> it feels good, but it's definitely a little bit challenging. All the way up. Externally rotate. All the way down. One more time, bring it up. Internally rotate. Lower that leg. Come forward, stacking. All the way back. As far as you can, don't compensate. All the way up. Externally rotate. Lowly lower, try to get a little bit more of a flexion forward towards that elbow and extend that leg all the way down to neutral. All right, everyone, thanks for joining me for our workout today and I will see you for our next one. Now, I know that Christmas is coming, we've got holidays in the works and we're getting pretty busy, so our next two weeks of workouts for the new ones will be 20 minutes. That way it's not consuming too much time out of your day and you'll be able to fit it in somewhere. 
All right, don't forget to like the video. Let me know how it went. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you for our next one. Incredible work today, everyone. Now, before you head out, be sure to smash that thumbs up button for me, drop a comment, let me know how it went, and subscribe to the channel for a new home workout every week. Finally, turn your notifications on for next week's new 20-minute abs and waist workout. This will be a series of dead bugs and leg drop variations, and I've decided to keep it short since I know the holidays are kicked into full gear right now, and I wanted to bring you something that you could quickly include into your day without taking too much time out of it. All right, everyone, thanks for joining me today, and I'll see you for the next one.